This is the 217 Recovery Podcast with Corey Winfield. You have a rich person's name. Like, you should be a billionaire with the name Winfield. And co-host Marnie Winfield. Checking the microphone. It's going good. It is the 30th of December, 2021. My name is Corey Winfield. My name is Marnie Winfield. This is the 217 Recovery Podcast. Welcome. I went back and listened to an old one from like two years ago. This time two years ago? Mm Mm-hmm. It was called Punch the Clown. Mm. And I remember having Joey King on. He lived in the sober living house, and he was always asking, hey, man, let me be on your podcast, man. I'm going to get you like thousands of listeners because everybody knows me. And then when we finally made him like a part of it as being like a technical whatever, one episode he lasted, and then he quit, and... It was too hard for him. That's too bad. Yeah, but he was funny, and he ended up leaving the house. But uh, it was uh, it was a good story because he would talk about this incident he had on the bus, and we were like, what? And he's like, yeah, you know, punch the clown. Or maybe Chris is the one that kind of <laughs> punching the clown. This, that's my phone. That's your phone. That's should not I, me. Should I answer it on the air? Sure, why not? I don't know who it is. Potential spam. No. Hello? Su beneficio de emergencia para internet se ha convertido sí. en el beneficio del programa de descuentos no para internet, ACP por sus siglas en inglés. Continuará recibiendo la misma cantidad de beneficio hasta el 1 de marzo. Después de esa fecha, la cantidad <laughs> de su beneficio puede reducirse. Mm-hmm. Se le notificará button, si debe tomar algo. Which is when you should be pressing. Good job. <sighs> Sorry, should we start over? No, just keep going. <laughs> okay. This is, the, this is the inconvenience right, that is the world. Turn down the Bluetooth pot on the board and my phone will not ring through anymore. I think I was, I was using that last time to play audio for the little special promo we made for Ron. Mm-hmm. And so I was shooting it from you know my phone to there. And, mm-hmm. yeah. Anyway, Joey King, Chris Goss. Chris Goss was talking about punching the clown. And I think... Joey did punch the clown, but I think Chris maybe called it punching the clown. I never heard of it called that before, but it was very uh, emotional, very mm-hmm. traumatic for Mr. Joey King. For so the listeners to clarify, what it what is the punch punching? The clown. Yeah, I know what it was because I heard I heard the podcast. <laughs> well, they'll have to listen to it because I don't talk that kind of way on this podcast. Okay, I don't okay. because I hold high standards and i just think it's it's better that way sometimes man sh- tyrone we don't need you and it was funny too because tyrone like when you listen to the beginning of that the open mm-hmm. it was real like just mellow mm-hmm. this is the 217 recovery podcast but then like over the years i had him like this and he's like <laughs> this so that's why you know it's a lot more energy to it he's gotten more into it and helping his voice career along mm-hmm. but yeah it was it was interesting and it was just me, Chris, and Joey on that one. And just some of the thoughts and, and some of the stuff they said. You know, I I don't take for granted my time there and starting the podcast. But look at me looking around now, much different. I mean, we have a different setup. We, <laughs> I would like to say more on point and topic, but probably not. But it's just, it's just a lot different now. And I guess because I'm farther along in my recovery and I'm noticing different things that I want to talk about and, you know, different things happen in my life. And that's kind of what we do is we talk about things that are happening to us and now they're different now, I guess. Mm -hmm. So we don't talk about punching clowns, (laughs) (laughs) which really isn't a clown. But anyway, yeah, so that was kind of interesting to go back down memory lane to go down the road and listen to that and... Mm -hmm. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was. Because there's times where you're like, (laughs) but there's times where like, we'll do a podcast or something. I'll be like, oh, okay, that was the greatest ever, you know? And as time goes by, I'm like, ooh, I'm afraid to listen to it. You know, it's like, oh man, it probably sucked. Mm -hmm. I think I had that same problem in the radio. Like I would, I would hardly record like the bits I did because I figure why I can, I'm going to do something better tomorrow. Why when I go, when I go back and listen to that. That's kind of a good attitude. Yeah, and then a lot of times I'm like, man, I wish I would have had that. <laughs> I wish I would have saved that. I, I do that with pictures. Like, I was thinking about that when I was driving to work after my family had left. And I was like, I didn't take, like, any pictures. Ugh, shame on me. And I'm like, oh, well, I'll just do it next time we get together. 
It's like the whole point is the, you know, capturing the, the little, the few times we do where I just read my phone, the few <laughs> times we are together. Yeah. You and I need to take more pictures too. We just I know. don't, you know, like, I know we just need to start. All right. Let's, let's do that. It can be a new year's resolution. Okay. Okay. Take a picture every day. Not every day. No, Why? that's cause that's silly. But just like, is it with the same pose and everything? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about recovery now. Well, I loved what you said earlier when you're sitting in your office and I had just gotten back and you're like, so are we done with the family stuff now? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been going. Yeah. Cause your, your father and a couple others came over today. Mm hmm. And we did Christmas on the 30th of December, and we've been going f since the 23rd, so it's yeah. been a minute. It's been a week of Christmas <sighs> and family and so are we done? We're done? traveling and making time and making plans, and yeah, it is kind of exhausting. And then I was told. It's not over yet. <laughs> what? Almost, though. And you're like, oh, New Year's Eve. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Sorry. No, I mean, I, I am truly grateful for being able to connect with as many people as we, as you know, as many loved yeah, ones as very we lucky. have been. We're just kind of joking about it, but. For sure. Yeah, I'd rather have it this way than the other way. Oh, yeah. But your answer was, yeah, on New Year's Eve. And I'm like, cool. And somehow in my brain, I still think it's the 27th or 26th. I don't know. Yeah, and I look at the calendar. I'm like, that's tomorrow. Mm -hmm. That's tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, actually, scratch that. It's Oop. not New Year's Eve. It's actually a New Year's Day. New Year's Day. Dinner. So we do got tomorrow off. Yes, yeah, so we, we do tomorrow off. Take just pictures. you and me. Mm -hmm. Practice pictures for the next year. Sure. All right. All right, then. That's cool. That sounds good. <sighs> yeah. So before we get into recovery talk, we will get to it, I promise. I love to brag, and I'll brag a little bit more here, made a piece of art that is so expensive. It's what they call priceless. Mm -hmm. And it is sitting right here in the 217 Recovery Studio. And don't worry, I'm not going to sell it. Oh. Uh, yeah, $2 million, $18 billion, not going to do it. It's so unique. It's the only one ever made. It's the only thing I think I've ever seen like it. Mm -hmm. And maybe we'll share a picture of it in one of our pictures. That's what we'll do. We can do that. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a picture after this podcast with that in the background. Okay. You can spot it and see it and go, what? Mm -hmm. And don't. I'm not going to sell it. It's a, I'm not, I uh, hope oh, you have to see it. Okay. I want to describe it, but I don't. And I just wanted to brag on that. Uh, this dude. I've been talking about, I guess, I mean, I've been talking about him for like the last week or so. He still has not downloaded the app, still has not listened to any podcast. So I feel like I can really blast him on here. And he keep, and I told him, you know, like reach out and do something. He keeps reaching out with the same questions, the same problems, you know, and I'm like, bro. And he keeps blaming recovery for being so hard. I'm so frust recovery is so frustrating. Mm -hmm. Recovery is so hard. Why are you guys so hard? My answer is, bro. <laughs> Recovery is beautiful. Recovery is easy. Addiction's hard, homie. Mm -hmm. I think you got the two mixed up, man. Like, why are you blaming recovery when you should be blaming addiction? And so today, when we were at breakfast, he's hit me up all kinds of silly stuff. And, and I was like, look, okay. One of the things that you have to do in early recovery, early, early, early recovery, like just walk into the door recovery, get yourself a doctor, therapist, dentist get your self-care stuff get your self-care game on point because mm -hmm. that's stuff that you probably haven't done in a long time it's going to take many trips to the dentist and the doctor you're going to want to see him and the same thing with your therapist you want to see your therapist probably once a week maybe twice if you can squeeze it in and so i tell him those things and you know i was like this is what you might want to try and he's like oh well, all right all right, man, my self-care game's tied up, man. I got that, you know, squared away. And I was like, okay, when you meet with your therapist, when, when's the next chance for you to meet with him? 
oh, Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Friday from 5 to 8 p.m. I'm like, that sounds like IOP, man. Like, that's not a therapist. Like, when are you going to get your one-on-one? Oh, I don't have one of those. Dude, you, you just told me you had your self-care game wrapped up and you're good to go. And No, when are you go to the dentist? Oh, um, I don't need to do that. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> Which eyes, you know, like get all that stuff squared away because a, it takes effort to do that effort. It yeah. takes effort to call a doctor and Hey, you need to get in. Oh, if you don't have a primary care, well then you got to find one that mm-hmm. takes effort. This takes away from you wanting to drink, to use. You might get frustrated along the way, but you know what? You can still be making progress. You get that appointment scheduled and guess what? You just accomplish something. And it was very simple. Very easy. Therapist. There you go. It's pretty simple to find one of those. Some people tell, oh, it's not hard. All right, you're just not trying the right people. Mm-hmm. And so I sent him to my therapist, Susan. And I don't know if she's taking anybody right now, but she knows other people. She works for a Pyramid of Hope in Boyne City. And so she can track him somewhere. You know, call your insurance. There's a card you have in your wallet. Flip that baby around, call the number. That's, I think that's the number one thing where I have people start. Mm-hmm. You know, just yeah, because you call that number, you just say, I'm look- I need, you know, I'm looking for somebody, a, a therapist ca- slash counselor. Mm-hmm. You know, you can say those words interchangeably and they'll at least line you up with somebody that you can talk network to. Network and yeah, doctor, and, dentist, you can knock them all out. One mm-hmm. phone call. And then you got to call and set it up. And sometimes, oh, we're not taking new people, you know. Okay, well, then it takes more call. But it, it sets you up for an easy success. And you're doing something good for yourself. And you're setting yourself up for appointments in the future. Mm-hmm. You know, where now he's just sitting there. All I do is work and miss meetings. Hmm. <laughs> you want me to just bring you over a bottle or something? You're like, what are you, what are you trying to get from me here? Like, what are you, you want me to, to tell you what you're supposed to do? Because you want one more person to tell you this? Or At some point, you got you to gotta take the game into your hands. This right. is your life. Yeah. You know, all these things that. You know, I, I say and suggest people to do. They're not for me. It's not more for my benefit. They're they're for them, you know. And I, I think it's hard sometimes to see it, but that feeling will come along if you just keep doing those things that you're supposed to be doing and realize that recovery is beautiful, man. You know, and is it hard? I guess depends how messed up you are because it's working on yourself. That's what it's about. So, are you really messed up? Okay, well, then it's going to be hard, you know, and it's going to be even more worth it, too, in a year, two years, three years down the road when you look back and go, damn, I'm so glad that I decided to be in charge of the game, you know, be in charge of my life again, or maybe for the first time ever. Mm-hmm. But I just just keep shaking my head sometimes, you know, it's like, bro, like, I don't know how much this you don't understand, you know, I mean, is he a bit off? I don't know, maybe, mm-hmm. but... You know, one of the things I told him too, I was like, listen, you know, download the app. It's free. We got 580 some podcasts on there, you know, take a pic, start listening. Mm-hmm. You know, chances are you'll learn something about yourself. Just listen to other people. No, I hadn't done that either. <laughs> either you know, it's just like. <sighs> and take a piece of paper, you know, and what, like the things that he just said. And I know this sounds super simple, but I did this. It was like eye appointment, you know, get your eyes checked out. See if you need glasses, see if you need, you know, if you wear contacts, you know, once, how long has it been since you've been there? You know, these are, this is stuff that I put on the back burner or didn't do at all for the longest time. Like you said, the dentist, the dentist is hard to get into. All these places are hard to get into now because since COVID, the back, there's backup stuff and they're really, you know, being careful with, you know, taking people in and certain people allowed to be in the waiting room, et cetera, et cetera. So you need to start planning. You need to take control like you said, of of your life and of your health. Mental health, emotional health, physical health, all that stuff. And write it down. Write down eye doctor. You know, and when you make that appointment, get a, get yourself a calendar, one of those real simple, you know, day by day calendars, the flip book ones or whatever, mm-hmm. just to keep on with keep with you. Keep track of stuff. And it make things a lot more organized and a lot seem a lot more, you know, laid out and simpler. Write your work hours in there so you know, you know, when you're not going to be available. And then if you need to get have time to set up, a, a, like, an appointment, 
ask your employer, you know, it's for your physical health. You should be able to be able to get away. Yeah, they go to dentist. They go mm-hmm. to the doctor. Trust me. Yeah. <laughs> but exactly. I can't because I'm working. Come on, bro. Is your name on the side of the building? Right. And people are just like, <laughs> no. I can't. I work. Yeah. I work Monday through Friday. I work all those hours. Mm-hmm. You need to go to the dentist. You need to go to the doctor. Those are appointments. You're allowed to miss the, miss work for those. Yeah, and a little tip, too. And I did this. When I was in sober living, we had a house meeting every Monday at 5 o'clock. We had to be there. You miss it, he'll kick you out. Mm-hmm. That simple. There was no, no excuse. You, there was nothing that could allow you to miss that. You know, I mean, unless you talk to him, like it was some real deep stuff. You had to be there. There was none of this. Well, my boss won't let me here. <laughs> so I knew right away that I had to talk to my employer when they hired me. And, and I said, hey, I can't work Mondays. Mm-hmm. You know, I have to have that time off at least five o'clock. But I, I just, you know, if you just have Monday off. I'll work any other day you want, you know. And they did. They gave me Monday and Sunday and Monday off. Mm-hmm. So it worked out, but I've seen people, Dustin was a friend of mine. He lived in the sober living house that I was manager of in Boyne city. And it was hard for that man to get out of bed. I say, man, he's like 45, you know, mm-hmm. I was like, dude, get up. But even with him, it, there was always excuses of, of why he, he couldn't make the meeting that was mandatory, you know? Oh, cause I'm working. And, okay. What are you afraid of that? Somebody's going to know that you don't use drugs anymore. That you don't drink anymore? Oh no, they're gonna hate me because I don't drink anymore. I know it. I know it's really weird to have to to just sit down and just think this through for a minute. You're thinking you're gonna go in there and you're gonna tell your boss, "Hey, I need Mondays off." Why? We're Mondays our busiest day. Why? Tell me why. One good reason. Because I live in sober living, and that's our house meeting. You piece of garbage, get out of here, you're fired. You know, that's how we kind of think it's going to go. We think it's going to go horrible. We think, oh man, this guy's going to think less of me, this and that. Well, first of all, you don't know what that dude's hiding, what's in that manager's closet. Trust me, right. it's not skeleton free. And second of all, F them, who cares? It's you're, you're just saying to them, I live wherever, and part of me living here is I have to be at this meeting at 5 p.m., I can come in earlier, I can come in later, but from this time to this time, I'm not available. And trust me, those three little hours or however many you're asking off, they're going to give it to you because they're going to want you around for the other ones. Yeah. You know, it's a very small price to pay. And then you guys both feel like you're win-win. You know, he's like, hey, you know, I got to keep my employees sober. You know, I'll make sure I'll give you all Monday off, you know, to make sure that you're there for that meeting. Mm -hmm. That's how a good employer is going to treat it. Yeah. They're not going to try to back you in a corner. Well, if you want to work here. And then you just kindly tell them, thanks. Um, there was like 18 other jobs I applied for that are calling me back right now. So just, you know, why don't you maybe give this to somebody else? Because trust me, it's not worth it. Your sobriety is way more important than any job. It is. Oh, just 100%. Fact. But it's so hard to think that sometimes when your mind is not on the right thing. And you're thinking, well, I got to just get this money. You know, once I get a little saved up, I'm going to move out. It's a stupid house. I don't want to live with 18 dudes. Or, you know, I don't know. I assume women would kind of have the same feeling with this. Maybe not. Maybe it's easier for them to go to their boss and say, hey, I don't know. Mm-hmm. But I'm just saying from the guy's standpoint, don't be afraid. Be, be assertive, not aggressive. But if they come back with something, then just say, all right, thanks. You know, I, this isn't the place for me then. Right. Not a big deal. And in my experience, when I've had, if you need to talk to an employer and they like, they put me on the schedule and sometimes, you know, you, so you need to make this, known to your employer, like on the side, like I've been like, Hey, can I talk to you for a minute? And then you say, listen, I can't work on Tuesdays. You know, I have obligations that I have to for it's for my recovery. It's really important. I have to be there there. They were just like, Oh my gosh, for sure. Whatever, anything that you need, you know, like I bet you nine times out of 10, that's the response you're going to get is what do you, whatever you need from us, let us know mm-hmm. because people are not, people are behind us. People are in our corner. And I think people that even have their own demons to face even more. So they yeah. might be like, I get it. You do you, you know, mm-hmm. like, whoa, you know, if you got to do that, take care of whatever you need to, you know, mm-hmm. people aren't going to judge us like we think they are. But we're so used to being judged and we're so used to feeling that like, Oh, I'm such a bad person and I can't open up and, and really be honest with my boss. And I've told the story many times about how, you know, my boss asked me if I was in recovery and I had a chance to lie. And it was one of those moments I'll remember for the rest of my life because I chose not to lie. 
And as awkward as it was, and I had a lot of respect for that guy. Um, so I was just like, well, his name is Kirk Rose and he and his brother own Hearthside Grove in Petoskey. It's this amazing place, man. And people bring their big RVs there and it's just like, it's awesome. It's like a summer playland, Mm -hmm. you know, for rich people, (laughs) but I'll be there one day, but it was, it was a great opportunity, you know, for me. And and I really like Kirk and Kirk and, you know, he had a lot of faith in God and, you know, I really respected that about him as, as well. And, it came up to me and I told them that we needed to go to Lansing because we were going to go to the UFAM rally. It's Unite to Face Addiction, Michigan. And we had like a spot, you know, I got them to give us like a advertiser's booth. Mm-hmm. But I mean, we had to bring all our stuff, but we had space there and we got an exemption. So I didn't have to pay them anything, mm-hmm. but we got our logo on all the flyers and all this other stuff. So it was very cool. So I told him, I was like, Hey, we need to go down there for that. And, he just looked at me, he's like, so are you in recovery yourself? And that was the moment right there. And I started thinking, I can't tell him because he's going to think bad of me. You know, I, I impressed him so much in the interview, you know, <laughs> he asked me, how much is it going to take to get you to work here? You know, and I just threw out a number and they're like, whoa, you know, like we posted this for like four bucks less than that or whatever it was, you know, mm-hmm. but we'll pay it for you because we think you're worth it. And I was like, wow, that's cool. So now here I am with this guy who I think thinks a lot of me and I, what do I do? And it was real quick. You know, I, I just, yep, I am. I have uh, 110 days or whatever it was at that time. Yeah. You know, clean. And he's like, that's good, man. That's good. I was like, yeah, it was, uh, it was, uh, it's, it's been, it's been tough, man. And, but things are going good now. And he's like, yeah. And he just kind of shook his head and kind of smiled. He was like, we realized that we didn't really know much about you when we interviewed you. So we looked you up on Facebook Mm-mm. and we found out about what you're doing with 217 Recovery and, and this and that. And I knew you were in recovery. I was just wondering if you would, you know, be honest with me. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. Like, what if you would have lied then? That oh, would have been a big like such, slap in the face. Oh my God. Yeah. And like it, eventually he went on vacation or whatever and he'd be like, here, Corey, here's the keys, you know, like trust me with all that stuff, you know? Mm-hmm. But, that was, that was amazing. And I had a chance to blow it all. And that was one of those pivotal moments where I, I will look back on that for a long time, forever. Like I say, it's, it's a moment that doing the right thing, I could pat myself on the back. Mm-hmm. You know, it was one of those moments. And I have a few of them where you just, you notice like I've changed. Like the old me would have just lied my ass off and no, no, man, you know, I, I just help people out and, you know. I'm better than them people, man, you know, but no, yeah, I am in recovery and I didn't have very, very much time either. And, and it was, it saved my ass, <laughs> you know, being truthful. So just stick it out there. And like I said, man, if I would have told them that, Hey, I need this off. They couldn't give it to me off. I, I wouldn't have worked there, but they were cool about it. I didn't have to go into too much detail. I just said, I have a meeting on Mondays at five, you know, mm-hmm. and they're like, we'll just give you that day off. All right, cool. It could be just that simple. And you're like, man, was I stressing over that for nothing? Yeah. Yeah, you were probably. But if they can't, then then, then they don't need you. <laughs> you need to find a different job. God's telling you, move on. He's got something better. Yeah. And I f- lots of times I feel like we paint ourselves in a corner. Like, we, like there are opportunities all over the place, and we just don't recognize that they're there until you look for them. And so the people are like, how am I going to find a job? You know, and then there's, and then you can blurt out all these reasons of why you're not hireable or the skills that you don't have or the things you don't want to do or can't do physically or whatever. And it's like, back up, let's go back to the positive you right now. And what, what are your skills? What is your skill set? What, you know, what do you like to do? What Mm -hmm. are you good at? You know, what do you want to be good at? What do you want to be good at? Exactly. And, you know, think outside the box kind of thing. And, you know, you'd be surprised what all is out there. It's just, I feel like a lot of times we just, we, we are so quick to be overwhelmed, you know, Mm -hmm. that we're not going to make it because we lived in that place. We lived in that, that dark and desolate, hopeless place for so long that for us to be inspired or like, you know, that's the word I'm looking for upbeat about you know what it is that's possible it's hard for us to think that way so it takes a little practice it takes a little encouragement but Mm -hmm. i guarantee you like you want to be a football coach 
Okay. Where do you start? I don't know. Searching up on the internet, you know, at, call high schools. Hey, call the host. Yeah, call hey, the coach, local high school. What's going on, man? We got a JV code. Like, how can I start? Do I got to inflate balls or I mean, what do I got to do? They'll, they'll find something for you. I guarantee you, if you called enough, you would find somebody. That, yep, we're looking for that. Mm-hmm. And you can work your way up. Okay, cool. They're not going to be like, hey, Mike, come on. We've been looking for a brand new head coach. You'll be doing college next year. No, it takes time. If you're good at it, you might. You might move up the ranks a lot, but you got to start somewhere. And if that's your dream, if that's what you want to do, go do it. Yeah. There was one guy I knew, and he loved brand new shoes. So he got a job out of rehab at, like, finish line or whatever. Like, he probably didn't make a crap ton of money, but he loved going to work, Mm -hmm. you know? And stuff like that, you know? Like, you don't ever think, like, I'm going to go look – just think about the, what you like, what you wouldn't mind getting up in the morning and getting ready to go to work for, you know, for a shift. Mm-hmm. That made him happy. So, I mean, things, you like ice cream? Work at a scoop ice cream. <laughs> no, don't do that. That's dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't do that. Eh, I don't know. It's crazy. Yesterday, we went to a place that I didn't even know existed. Until last week when we had the intervention podcast, we were talking about interventions and you told me that you, that they, your family had one for you. I didn't know that. Oh yeah. And then yesterday we returned to the scene. Yeah. Doom, doom. Where's my scary button? But anyway, it was quite interesting to, you know, hear you kind of tell like what happened and stuff and how they pretty much tricked you into it. And how awkward that must've felt. And, uh-huh. and then when we were there, I, I don't know. I felt like, celebrity or something almost you know because they're like you two we got this going on here maybe next summer you guys can come back and help us and blah, blah, blah. like we're experts mm-hmm. you know and people will ask you you know if you're in recovery you get some time under your belt you know family friends that they notice mm-hmm. you know they'll see you not posting dumb shit on facebook or whatever and they're like man or they'll just post you'll they'll see you actually being positive on facebook and i'm like damn you know and you know so-and-so has a problem you know what do i do and you know be careful um because all, all you can tell them is what you did for yourself, you know, mm-hmm. and maybe some suggestions that were given to you, you know, as far as like getting kind of started and just n- telling them that they're not a bad person or whatever, but people will do, they'll, they'll look out and reach out. That's what I meant. Look out. They'll reach out mm-hmm. to you. And, and that feels good too. When people do that. Yeah. You know, so you, you'll realize, damn, I'm on my way, but don't get too cocky. I don't, I don't know. I mean, the, the circumstances that well, we'll just I'll just say it what she, the circumstances that my aunt was talking about is she has this this lake house very nice lake house and um, lots of bed space and whatever available and apparently her grandson was able um, had found a summer job in the area working on boat boats boat what hoist is that right yeah. Anyhow, anyhow, and so very lucrative job, work hard, kind of play hard deal, you know, summertime on the lake, whatever. And I mean, she was just like, it got out of hand, you know, and granted, they kept their jobs and worked hard during the day. But she said that it just turned into this party situation that was, you know, out of control. And for me, I mean, and she's like, what should I do? Because I don't want it to get like that again, you know, this summer. I'm thinking to myself, like, if it was my house, I would just be like, Here, here's the rules. You know, this is how, this is my home, and this is how, you, if you want to stay here, you're going to respect it, and this is how it's going to go, you know. But then again, you also, we're coming from a different place, you know, because here we are, li- lived an entire life of addiction. So for me, drinking and partying is not the way that I live anymore. And I wouldn't be able to be around it like that either. And my aunt's the farthest thing from that. And it's her home. So the way I look at it is say, if you want to stay in my house, then you're going to go by my rules. You know? And things aren't going to get out of control because she's not going to let them. Whether she's capable of putting her foot down like that, I don't know. It was a tricky situation, too, because they were younger. Like, they were like 20 before, yeah, yeah they even weren't even of age, age. right? So it's, it's a tricky one. And one of the questions was, you know, does he have a problem? 
you and I, we don't know that. Right. You know, people who get DUI sometimes don't have a problem. They just pick a bad night to drive, you know? Mm-hmm. So, not, I, we don't know. And only time will tell. We we did meet with an individual over the summer, and we were like, look, man, like, just know that nothing good happens. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. when, you, when you, think, hey, you think you're having fun partying, but not one good thing's going to happen. It doesn't make you a better person. It doesn't make you stronger. It doesn't make you faster. It doesn't make you smarter. It makes all the opposite of all those. Yeah. So just know that. And, you know, if you want to party, whatever, man. But, like, just be very careful. Because before you know it, you're hooked. And you don't know what to do. You don't know how to stop. And you don't want to be labeled an alcoholic. Mm-hmm. So you don't have the problems, and you start doing it in secret. Yeah. Start hiding bottles around the house, you know, and it's just, it's a tough one, man, to talk to the younger people because we were young, you know, we didn't listen. I guess we did mm-hmm. <laughs> just to the other people. Ah, they're just trying to ruin your fun, bro. Mm-hmm. They, don't, they don't get it, man. They got like pff, families and stuff, whatever. Pff. And my friend Paul, we met him. Or you, I met him a long time ago. You met him mm-hmm. over Christmas. And Paul and I, we were, we've been friends since like seventh grade, eighth grade, something like that. So we go back a while, maybe even before then. But my point is, Paul, we were friends in high school. And that, that was the drinking thing, you know, like buddy's house on the weekend. And it just kind of became more. And. I never grew up. Paul got married, had had kids, and he's like, Psh, him and my friend Ed both are just like, man, I, don't, I can't even find a time to drink beer. And if I was going to drink beer, I'd feel like shit the next day. So I don't even want to do that, you know? And where me, it was like, well, if I need to drink the next day, otherwise I'm going to be shaken. I got to stop. You know, I'll stop when I have a family, which is a lie that I, I was telling myself. I just would have been a drunk father. I just would, it would just would have been another mess. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I mean, some people can go through a drinking phase in, in their younger life, but then not be obsessed with it, you know. And Paul was more obsessed with trucks and, you know, building things in his career. You know, he was more, I mean, I was obsessed with my career too, but then, you know, being married and having a family and other responsibilities come along, sure. You know, and if you looked at me and Paul back in the day and said, you guys are both on, and maybe someone sat him down one time, who knows? And it was right. uncle died from alcohol use and the effects it has on the body. I mean, maybe that's what he saw. I don't, I don't know that either. You know, maybe someone did, I don't know, but the way our paths went, we're we're totally different. And when I was like 22, I had an older friend, Mike, and I thought he was, you know, like had a problem. And he looked at me one day and said that I scared him the way I drink and that, I reminded him of the movie leaving Las Vegas, you know, and I'd never seen the movie, but I was like, whatever, man, yeah, I heard about it. But that still kind of stuck with me for the rest of my life. Like, how would he call me an alcoholic? Like, why would he tell me he's worried about me and my drinking? You know, he drinks just as much as I do, which probably wasn't true. I'm sure I drank way more than he did. Mm-hmm. I was always drinking. If I was breathing, I was trying to drink, you know, it was... One of those things, and I try to pride myself. Oh, man, I've been drinking all day, you know. That's not cool, man. Right. Anyway, didn't mean to get off on a rant or a tangent there, but I'm just. No, sometimes I'm just listening to what you're saying, and it's like the exactly, exact like words that should be coming out of my mouth. <laughs> so it's just like speaking the truth. Yeah. But it does turn around if you give us some time, and it's going to be hard at first if you want to consider it hard. I just don't like work. I don't like hard work, especially. So I looked at it as lots of fun. That's lots of fun working on myself. You know, if you think positive about it and realize what you have in front of you is, is exciting. Mm-hmm. It's brand new. And guess what? You don't have to apologize for shit you don't even remember saying to people. Nope. We'll never have to do that again. Mm-hmm. You know, and you get four months clean. You have a choice. You know, you get away from the, the liquor and the drugs for long enough. That's when I think it does become a choice. You know, you, you can choose to set yourself on fire. You can do that any day you want. Mm-hmm. You know, you can choose to eat ice cream. You can choose all kinds of things. But by not choosing <laughs> to set up your self-care, 
I just think that it's, it's a huge mistake. And like I said, it's very simple. It's very easy. And you accomplish something. Yeah. And when you start accomplishing things and you start feeling good about yourself and they're very easy, easy tasks to accomplish. There's people that uh, I've taken with hand, hope not handcuffs. They call, Hey, can you you know take this person to or from treatment? And I'm like, yeah, let's get it done. And you know, I talk with a lot of great people and there's a few that I asked, Hey, can you do me a favor? can you call or leave a message on a voicemail or send it to me through Facebook or whatever and just say, Hey, my name's whatever. And I want to thank hope Night handcuffs and two seventeen recovery Without them. I wouldn't have got the treatment, you know, thanks. So you can say your name. You don't have to say your name, but just, you know, just acknowledge cause they were like, well, I want to help. What can I do? And then I, I give them that little task and they can't do it. You know, and it's just kind of like, wait, like that, just ask for the small little thing. And so this one guy, I'm like blowing his stuff up still. I left a message, a little comment on this thing. Cause it's not, it's not looking good for him. And I told him, I was like, Hey bro, I had to take my phone to the store, man. Some thought was broken. And they told me it wasn't, you know, I just don't understand. You know, I, I'm not getting any of your messages. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's really weird, bro. And that was passive aggressive, but I don't know what it's, you know, it's like, come on, like, and this this was a guy who was begging me once to be a sponsor, and I I, him, I don't sponsor people, mm-hmm. but I'll be your friend. You know, you want me to pull you up out of the mud every other day? I will. You're not gonna like it, and you're gonna hate me for it. But I'm just telling you right now, that's what it's gonna be. And a lot of people aren't ready for that either. So I'd say 99 percent of the time, I don't even do that. You know, with them, I just say no. But this kid, it's, it's like it's not cool how many times I've given this guy a ride. Mm-hmm. You know, and he is barely a kid too, or barely adult. I don't know how you look at that, but right. he's very young. And it, it, but it's still, it's like it's not cool, you know. And I don't know. <sighs> <laughs> I'd rather be stressed out like that than I was three years ago. Well, I was just talking with my sister who came to visit us. And she's seen me through. Oh my gosh! I don't even want. I don't even want to know what she remembers. Your very young sister. My very well, she's young not that sister. young now. Yeah, she's she's mid twenties. Yeah, she's young. She was. Yeah, I was all grown up and messed up before while she was a baby. <laughs> it was. Yeah. So anyway, let's not even go there. But um, she came up to visit, and I haven't seen her in a long time, and we haven't even had a Christmas together in forever. And, um, in any way, she was just kind of, it was nice to show her, you know, the nice little life that we have. And she was really super impressed by it all. And it was, it was really touching because she was just like, you know, do you sometimes just sit back and just feel like you're living the dream? And I was like, I don't know about that, but, you know, pretty, pretty close. And then she kind of sat there and, um, she's like, you know, I'm sober. And I was like, Really? Because I, I didn't want to ask, you know, because I, I, I wasn't sure. I had thought maybe at one point I had heard that that was something she was going to do. But I, I don't know what sparked it, you know. And that, I think that's a conversation that I, I do still want to have with her. Um, but it didn't really feel like the right place and time. Because I want it to be, be a meaningful conversation. And I want her to be ready to share it. And you, you know what? God bless her heart if if she just made the decision just like, I don't want to go down what Marnie, like, I don't want to go down that same path that she did because she saw it firsthand and she saw that progression of it, you know? So I don't know. We're going to find out, but I know that I'm proud of her. I was like, that's awesome. You know, I'm proud of you. I'm like, you get a, you get a sober t-shirt. <laughs> no, but she was, she was grateful. And you know, there's some people like, we're really proud of what, you know, we wear our, our recovery stuff um, because that's who I am. That, so I don't have a problem if people ask me about it or what they think or if they're, you know, if I say judgmental, I guess that could be some, somebody might look at you and be like, you're missing out. No, I'm not. You know, I am missing out, but I'm missing out on a lot of bad shit. Yeah. That's what I'm missing out on. So, um, but no, she's, you know, to be able to have her share that. And she was, she was really proud of it when she said it out loud. That's yeah. good. So, but I, I'll more to fill you in on that when I find out. Nice. So you gave her a little tour of the, the crib. Mm-hmm. 
Casa Winfield. Yeah. Did you show her the studio? I did. Did you show her your bedroom? Mm-hmm. She says, what a magic happens. I didn't say that, but... Oh. I, I, <laughs> you tell her, this bed right here? No. <sighs> no, but Life she's, is good. she's doing really good. She's She's a teacher, and she's getting married. She's getting married in... July. July 8th, 9th. Yes. July. Yep. Mm-hmm. July 9th. Being bridesmaid. It's going to be fun. I get to be a, a plus one of the bridesmaid. Mm-hmm. Yes. Hey, yeah. it's your it's your sister-in-law. Your dad and I are going to catch a baseball game, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Just make sure it's not on the day of the wedding. Uh, we can get that in before. Hmm. You can just Zoom it. We'll be on Zoom. It's going to be a small group of people, so you're, you're, you'll be missed if you're not there. Yeah, it'll be a good time. <laughs> yeah, it will be fun, though, and I'll just get to take in the joy of the people. And, and see, here's the thing. Like, this is the kind of stuff, like, we plan our life now. Like, I we events and things and, like, I don't know, get-togethers. Things are so much less complicated when you don't have to worry about the fucking drinking and drugs it's just crazy it's just and it's not even part of the equation so it's just like not i mean we're gonna be functional we're gonna be there we're gonna be looking good you know it's like all that stuff was an unknown back when and back when i was drinking it was like will i even make it there i hope so am i gonna be feeling sick i don't know oh man Sure is different, and it sure is good. And the relationships that at one time you thought you lost forever, you screwed it up, and then you start mending those fences, and you know, realizing that things can change, and you can get those relationships back. You know, with my father, of course, I'm mm-hmm. super happy that that's that's going well. And you know, unfortunately, my stepbrother passed away recently, and I wish I could have. Talk to him a little more. Mm-hmm. But don't have those regrets, you know. And I don't really have regrets, but it's it's not too late that you can change things. And maybe for the other people, you know, you can be <clears throat> present in their life. So just realize that it's never too late to change and never stop quitting. You know, if you... If you fail, if you fall, you know, if you relapse, you get back up, man. You know, you're going to feel like crap mentally, spiritually, emotionally, physically. But get back up. It is so worth it. I just want you to know that I promise you that. It's promised by AA. <laughs> I promise you that. Yeah. It's, what it's worth, too. It's facts, man. It's just, it's amazing. And don't give up on yourself. And there's a lot of people I haven't given up on, you know, but there's more that I haven't given up on than there are that I have. Mm-hmm. And and that's just me. And I'm kind of an asshole sometimes. So, <laughs> you know, especially if you're family, you know, like they're not going to disown you forever. And, you know, you, you change your ways. You are changing back into that person that God meant you to be. So just one day at a time, not even a day at a time, just right now. You know, not today, not tonight, not just right now. You know, if you're having a hard day, go through it like that. Listen to some podcasts from the past. Yeah. But thanks for listening. And uh, we'll talk to you on Saturday, which would be first. The first. I need a new logo. Like every year we have a new logo for our, our podcast. Okay. It's me swallowing hard. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure why I did that, but no, it's, yeah. Should we just do the Puma logo or just make something different? Let's make something different. All right. New logo for the podcast coming. Mm-hmm. Hmm. All right. Look for that Saturday, I guess. Yeah. Have a good one. Be safe. Happy New Year. And reach out if you need anything. Oh, and sign up to win a free shirt. We'll give you one of our new ones with our new logo on it. 
217 recovery.com. Sign up. Everyone who signs up wins. Just a little heads up. See ya. Have a good night, everybody.